Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. This is the first in a series of short videos explaining the world's largest industry. In 2009, Lawrence Solomon wrote this article in the Financial Post. The climate change industry, the scientists, lawyers, consultants, lobbyists, and most important, the multinationals that work behind the scenes to cash in on the riches at stake, has emerged as the world's largest industry. Virtually every resident in the developed world feels the bite of this industry, often unknowingly, through the hidden surcharges on their food bills, their gas and electricity rates, their gasoline purchases, their automobiles, their garbage collection, their insurance, their computer purchases, their hotels, their purchases of just about every good and service, in fact, and finally, their taxes to governments at all levels. These extractions do not happen by accident. Every penny that leaves the hands of consumers does so by design, the final step in elaborate and often brilliant orchestrations of public policy, all the more brilliant because the public, for the most part, does not know who is profiteering on climate change or who is aiding and abetting the profiteers. In other words, it's a giant Ponzi scheme to move money from the pockets of the poor and middle class into those of globalist billionaires. Here's an excellent example of how this scam works. Democrats just confiscated another $500 billion from taxpayers in order to tackle the climate crisis. They say it lowers energy costs, it creates good paying jobs, it creates a fairer tax system. But meanwhile, back in the real world, the Democrats have created record inflation through their climate policy. The stock market is crashing and millions of people will be wiped out while globalist billionaires become richer and richer. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the origins of this Ponzi scheme. In 1990, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change published these graphs. The graph showed that Earth has seen tremendous cyclical variations in climate over the last million years. They showed that Earth was much warmer 5,000 years ago and that we're actually in the coolest period now of the last six or 7,000 years. They showed that there was a medieval warm period and a little ice age. And they showed that all warming over the last 150 years occurred before the year 1950. Nothing in these graphs indicated that we were having a climate crisis or that humans control Earth's temperature. But 10 years later, the United Nations completely changed the data. They got rid of the medieval warm period, they got rid of the Little Ice Age, and they made a tremendous hockey stick of warming since about the year 1910. This allowed them to blame humans for climate change and create the world's largest industry. So let's look at what happened during the 1990s to enable this scam. Listen to what Dr. David Deming from the University of Oklahoma told the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. I am a geologist and geophysicist. I have a bachelor's degree in geology from Indiana University and a PhD in geophysics from the University of Utah. My field of specialization in geophysics is temperature and heat flow. In recent years, I have turned my studies to the history and philosophy of science. In 1995, I published a short paper in the academic journal Science. In that study, I reviewed how borehole temperature data recorded a warming of about one degree Celsius in North America over the last 100 to 150 years. The week the article appeared, I was contacted by a reporter for National Public Radio. He offered to interview me, but only if I would state that the warming was due to human activity. When I refused to do so, he hung up on me. I had another interesting experience around the time my paper in science was published. I received an astonishing email from a major researcher in the area of climate change. He said, quote, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period, unquote. And that's exactly what they did. Climate academics got rid of the medieval warm period. They simply made it disappear. So what happened between the year 1990 and 1995 when academics decided to get rid of the medieval warm period? What happened is that Al Gore got elected vice president. Right after he took office in 1993, he invited my good friend Dr. Bill Gray from Colorado State University to a global warming conference Gore was holding in Washington, D.C. 
Dr. Gray was the leading tropical meteorologist in the world and the man who invented modern hurricane forecasting. Dr. Gray told Al Gore that he'd be happy to attend Gore's global warming meeting, but he's not a huge fan of Gore's global warming theory. Dr. Gray had received money from the U.S. government for his research every year for several decades. But after that discussion, he never received another penny of funding from the U.S. government. It appears that Al Gore blackballed him for not going along with Gore's scam. This next sequence of video shows why Al Gore purged dissent from academia. We have the opportunity now to create jobs all across this country, in all 50 states, to repower America. Al Gore had already encouraged billionaire airline owner Sir Richard Branson to invest big time in green energy. Branson is pledging future profits from his airline to the tune of perhaps $3 billion. $3 billion, that's the B, to fight global warming. Is Al Gore a prophet? <laughs> um, uh, I just spelled prophet. <laughs> this never had anything to do with climate. It was about creating the world's largest Ponzi scheme. In the next part of this video, I will discuss the fraud behind the creation of Michael Mann's hockey stick. I will release that video in the next day or two. In the meantime, please visit Toto Kyrie Caesar, Toki and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.